scroll down the Insta page, saw a picture that I didn't want to see. He had his hand around your waist and a smile on your face like the way you look at me. Only I've been seeing a lot of this kind of rustic, beachy, aged louvadors on Pinterest, and I like them. So I really wanted to get some reclaimed ones, but I haven't been able to find anything with the right dimensions and the right number and everything on Facebook Marketplace. So I have accepted that I'm going to need to do this with new ones. And look, I think we're going to end up with a good project out of this because I'm going to be testing out different ways that you can age it from brand new, plain, basic Pine. Let's just start at the beginning with our old friend, Pinterest. So there's so many different ways that you can make wood look rustic. So let's just refine what I'm even trying to do, like the exact colour. This is really important for me because I just need to stay on task. Like if I don't set myself a really clear thing, I'll go off on a tangent and make something that that ends up not looking very good or just is not what I started with, you know? So this one's this one's okay. This one is too yellow, I think. This one is okay, but this is what I need to be really careful about. This looks a bit new. It looks like it came from a factory. And I get that like, it's a bit trendy to have that effect. It's kind of like Pottery Barn vibes. I don't hate it, but what I want is something that looks more authentically rustic. And this looks not authentically rustic. Now this is obviously like, I would totally just go with this. If I could get my hands on stuff like this, it's crazy when you see these in France, these are everywhere and they're so cheap and it's just like so easy. These are obviously amazing. They are authentic, they're so tall, but I actually think if I'm doing it myself, they're a little bit too shabby looking for what I want. I want like beachy, smooth, rustic rather than like that rustic, even though that's nice. If I'd found them, I'd probably just go with them. But since I'm creating it myself, it's not quite what I want. And this also is a little bit too rustic for what I want. Although I do also like these. I'm gonna have to pin this one because that's a beautiful door, pair of doors. 17th century entrance doors from Spain. God, I'd love that as my front door. Like, that's beautiful. These ones are a little bit too whitewashed. I don't mind this. This also looks a little bit fake rustic and not like legitimate, but the shape of it is pretty similar to what I wanna get. I want that detail at the top that's gonna to make it look like a piece of furniture rather than something that I've just stuck a bunch of stuff onto, which is probably what it actually is. And this also, this is just slightly too manufactured looking, but it's very close to what I want. These ones look pretty close to what I want, actually. Same with these. These are almost slightly too yellow and slightly too rustic, I think. But what I do like about these are the handles. I think that I need a handle that's tall like that. I need something like an iron handle. These are slightly too shabby, but they're getting towards the color that I like. And this one, it looks too manufactured. Like it's nice, but it's, I just want the, I want the life in it. I want the aged, true aged. Well, I'm gonna, it's gonna be fake aged, but I want it to not look so brand new. I wanna look like it might have a bit of a smell about it. Not a bad smell, but just not like that formaldehyde factory smell, you know? And then this, it, this is the obvious, like the authentic European thing. In Europe, all the shutters are that color. I don't know why, should I just ask ChatGPT why they're that color actually? Because they really all are Mediterranean blue or Mediterranean green. The color choice is not just arbitrary, it has historical, practical and cultural reasons behind it. I'm so glad I Googled this. Believed to have been chosen to help repel insects and keep interiors cooler. Huh. Reflecting sunlight, these colors have reflective properties that help deflect sunlight and heat in the Mediterranean climate, protecting against evil spirits. In some cultures, the blue and green colors were believed to protect against evil spirits and ward off bad luck. Most commonly associated with countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea, Greece, Italy, Spain, parts of France. Other regions in Europe might have different color preferences. And well, that makes sense because they're all the hot places that have to worry about insects and keeping the indoor temperatures cool. 
Okay, well that's really interesting, but it's not what I'm gonna do in my kitchen today, but that is like the legit thing. Definitely, if you wanna engage in legitimate, authentic European vibes, well, Mediterranean vibes, that's your color. I actually don't mind this. I think that this is pretty close to what I want. The pine that I've bought is like pale yellow. So if I were to do something like this, I think I would probably need to stain it a bit of like an orangey color. Not completely orange, not like that cabinet I had the other day, but you know, like a lighter tannish color and then add a whitewash on top maybe. That's exactly what I decided to test out. So I got some pieces of pine wood to test out this stain. I saw on YouTube someone using a wire brush like this to scrape out the grooves to like exaggerate that texture of the wood grain a little bit. And then I tested the stain. So this was called medium oak and I thought this was gonna be the perfect color, but I also tested out a light oak just to make a comparison. And I'm really glad I did because the medium oak I think was too dark. Now I tested out whitewashing and I used very watered down paint. The idea is that you paint it on and then you wipe it off and you're just left with a really light whitewash, essentially. I didn't like the way it turned out. It just made the whole thing look milky. I wanted it to sort of stay in the grooves but partly wipe off in some places and I just wasn't loving it. So I decided that I needed to do a little bit more testing. This time I tested out this wire brush drill attachment. Now it's a bit awkward to use. It, it really went all over the place. So you definitely want to start off very slow if you use one of these. But I just tried to go along the grain to like etch out the wood grain and see if perhaps this strategy would maybe have a different result to the wire brush that I used for the first test. And then I just went over it with a sanding pad. It's just to get that top layer back to a smooth spot. So you can see here now when it was done that there really was some more dimension in that wood grain, which is exactly what I wanted. Now I was feeling a little bit creative at this point. So I took this sample that I did that has a light layer of whitewash on it and also some white paint stains on the side. And I thought, why not try this wire brush on top of this? And I started to like this look because I feel like this started to bring some life and wear and tear into this piece of wood. And then I added more of that stain. And I think this started to add some more dimension because the bits that had been worn away by the drill only effectively had one layer of stain, whereas the other bits had two or three, and it started to create more dimension. And I think that this will be ideal to then whitewash on top because the whitewash won't make it look flat. There'll be this dimension and depth underneath it. Well, that's what I'm hoping anyway. Now I thought I had my plan sorted, but I was in for a little bit of a surprise when I took the plastic wrapping off and I realized that even though the package said, Louvador suitable for painting, varnishing and staining. Fabulous. The wood was actually quite raw and unfinished, so it wasn't actually a very good comparison to the piece of pine wood that I'd been testing with. So even though I had been doing this testing, I really just had to embrace figuring it out as I went. I tried using a foam brush and it was a terrible idea and didn't work well at all, so don't do that. What I found worked way better was just a really small paintbrush. The one that I used is like an art paintbrush, but it was the perfect size to go along each of the horizontal pieces of wood so I could really carefully cover them really evenly. Now I also went along the sides, but I didn't do the back. I left the back with the raw pine because I have a feeling that maybe one day I might want to do another project on these and use the other side in a different colour maybe. I really like the colour of the stain on this wood. I think it's exactly what I was trying to get and I think the best way to describe the colour is fox. It's the colour of a fox. Please enjoy this baby fox I captured on our wildlife camera. I mostly capture badgers on the wildlife camera, but sometimes foxes make an appearance. So it's nice to have some fox colored doors, even though it's about to change when I add the whitewash on it. But first, a bit of a risky move that did pay off. I followed my instincts. I just felt like it needed a sand after adding the stain. 
So I sanded it down just lightly with a fine grit sandpaper just to smooth it out a bit. And it did take off a little bit of the color, but it kind of just evened it out and smoothed it out. Now I tried to do the horizontal pieces of wood, but it was just a bit too hard. So I just accepted that as long as I get the smoothness around those wider panels around the edge, I think that's good enough. So I tried two different ways with this whitewashing. I firstly started off doing it the way that I had practiced, which was painting on some slightly watered down paint and then wiping it off. But as I continued with it, what I found worked just as good was really watering down the paint and just literally painting on a really thin layer. The effect was so similar. I, I honestly couldn't tell the difference between the parts where I had put thicker paint and rubbed it off and the places where I had just used the thinner paint. I still was kind of feeling unsure about myself, but I felt a lot better when I put this completed one next to an original and you can really see next to each other that it does look aged. And do you know what? I think it just proves sometimes you've got to take a step back and have a look at how far you've come to fully appreciate the progress you've made. So I'm finally feeling ready to continue with the other doors. Yeah, old boyfriends kind of scare me because they all got a little bit of history with you. Even when you try to tell me I got no real reason to worry. My mind starts to imagine things that never happened. I start to believe that you're still in love with some other has been. Baby, I'm just asking, do you think I'm gonna be the last one? Mm -hmm. The last one. I've heard stories about exes calling up brides on their wedding day. Professing all the love from a once upon a time that they threw away. And the fear that I'm fighting is constantly rising in the back of my mind Is that you'll finally open up your eyes That you'll leave me for another guy Yeah, old boyfriends kind of scare me Cause they all got a little bit of history with you Even when you try to tell me That I got no real reason to worry My mind starts to imagine things that never happen I start to believe that you're still in love with some other has been Baby, I'm just asking Do you think I'm gonna be the last one? Do you think I'm gonna be the last one? Baby, the hardest part Is fighting back this anxious heart But I've come to realize That if we don't have trust Then we might as well have nothing But old boyfriends still scare me They all got a little bit of history with you Even when you try to tell me I got no real reason to worry My mind keeps on imagining Things I know aren't happening I start to believe that you're still in love With some other has been Baby, I'm just asking Do you think I'm gonna be the last one? I still have some more things that I want to do in part two of this. I want to put hardware on the doors. I bought these little reclaimed things, but I've got some more coming and I want to first compare them before I decide which one I use. I also want to put wood architraves along the top and some wood veneer along this side here. And I'm going to stain it all and, and whitewash it all just like this so that it starts to look even from the side like a solid wood piece of furniture maybe or just a little, you know, a little bit more like made of wood rather than factory kind of stuff. Now, reflecting on what I've done so far, the execution has been disappointing because turns out there's all sorts of limitations in our kitchen. These ones have a gap in between them because I couldn't get them close enough because the space was so limited and I can't move anything. But like they're on there, that's fine. This side had a similar problem and I actually wasn't even able to make it work. So these doors open like this. It's fine, it just means that the two things don't match. And like, how was I supposed to know that our floor isn't level? So what might have enough space at the top 
doesn't at the bottom. So that was a pain to find out, but it's just like the reality of all the things in this house are kind of like that. We're just figuring out as we go. And I think given all these obstacles I've had of an uneven floor and, and things that are too close together, I still think it's come out okay. I think that my execution, probably a six or a seven out of 10, but I think the concept is a 10 out of 10. I think the staining and the whitewashing is exactly what I wanted it to be. And you can see how this could be done on anything, obviously. I think it could be quite cool to do on like an Ikea Billy bookcase, just to make it more, you know, just to make it something more interesting. So the idea is there. So stay tuned for part two, where I'm gonna finish off these cabinets, but I'm also gonna do a massive pantry declutter. I'm gonna be decluttering the whole thing. You saw what a, what a mess it was before. So I'm gonna be clearing it all out, organizing it, so it looks just as good on the inside as it now does on the outside. And then we'll move on to the next project. <laughs>